Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. I'm your host, C.S. Joseph, and this is Season 26, Episode 6, The Eight Rules for Love for ESFPs. So ESFPs are a very fascinating uh, type. They're, they're my superego, and I mean, if I was going to be in a sexual relationship with them, it would be a, a relationship that's really around like a, a hyper high amount of uh, of growth to the point where uh, it would just be like, oh, hey, let's uh, constantly just get on each other's nerves and treat the other person like they're a child, basically, because, you know, the ENTPs find ESFPs childish, and so also uh, do, uh, well, they, they, the ESFPs find uh, ENTPs completely uh, childish as well. It can be a huge problem. But uh, in terms of uh, the relationship overall, it's known as the refinement relationship. We are constantly refining each other. It's, it's what the superego relationship is all about, right? Uh, it's, it, it's, it's about refinement. But having been married to an ESFP in the past, I really have like this perspective about them, you know, through my refinement uh, <laughs> of being uh, married to an ESFP for 11 years. And uh, it, it's really like kind of allowed me to create, you know, uh, you know, this set of rules uh, for actually loving ESFPs. Because oftentimes, you know, they seem so simple, but they're actually extremely complex. They're, they are very uh, complex people. Um, and a lot of people out there just aren't really aware of these complexities. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, if we're looking at their function stack, they obviously have strengths and weaknesses. Some of the weaknesses is being afraid of making decisions because they don't want all of the doors closed versus one of the doors uh, closing. So if they open one door, that means all the others close. But what they need to realize as soon as they go through that door, there's going to be a whole other set of doors with a whole lot more options. But for some reason, ESFPs just aren't that aware of the fact that new options are created every time they lose options. And they're always trying to hold on to those options all the time. But then that's how they themselves can stagnate. That's a, it's like a really ba it's a, it's a bad habit for an NI inferior. ESTPs have the same problem. But the thing is, is that ESFPs, because they're so journey oriented with being a progression type and always constantly trying to go on a journey, uh, it can hold them back because they're not entirely sure that that's the journey they want to go on because they don't want to waste their time going on a journey. Although they don't mind going on the journey, they want to make sure that the journey they go on is the right journey. There's nothing really wrong with that, but it can get in the way of their life. And, you know, when it, when it comes to eight rules for love, it's really important to understand, you know, needs versus wants, you know, when you're considering, you know, the cognitive function stack of a particular type. And ESFPs are no different. Uh, you know, obviously we know that they have experted sensing hero. Uh, this is, you know, viewable in season three, for example. I think it's season three, episode six as well. And they have SE Hero, which means they constantly are craving attention. Uh, craving attention, that's a huge need, but the want would be like they, they, they would really want loyalty. Um, their FI parent, they really want to have the opportunity to vent and just be heard. It doesn't matter if they don't really care as much about another person like listening to them as much as it is they just want someone to hear them out and their emotional frustration even even some of their successes of their achievements uh with with you know things that they value etc they really want to be able to share that and have this um i don't know bounce ideas uh off this you know bouncing board you know like other people around them etc you know te child while it wants fame it really just needs to be respected and regarded uh and not slandered etc and i inferior again always given a choice never had its choices taken away never had its freedom removed okay very basic things that we're aware of uh you know and and that's just their ego but don't forget you know there's their shadow as well but like, if I was to really go about, you know, making rules for love, it's, it can be difficult, you know, to kind of understand the direction of which people need to be loved. And ESFPs don't exactly make it easy. And one of the reasons is that 
while they understand what they value, it's been in my experience that they have an extremely hard time actually communicating and articulating what they need or even what they want. They have an extremely difficult time. And then sometimes if you pressure them too much, they'll feel like they're under so much pressure that they'll just give up. They'll just shut down. So it ends up becoming like this huge pressure management system when it comes to ESFPs because they really do buckle under pressure. As much as ESFPs, especially ESFP men, like to look strong, like to look like the head honcho or the alpha or the chief of the village or all this, it's, it, they're really just a paper tiger in, in those cases because the reality of the situation, while that's how they look, they really do buckle under pressure because they're more willing to give up than most of the other 16 types on certain things on even potentially most things, unless they intrinsically actually insanely care about it, or they know that it is a responsibility that they're taking on, like for example, raising children, that they're just not going to give up on because from their point of view, there's no choice. They don't have a choice, right? And it's it's difficult to really differentiate you know, as to what level of growth an ESFP is actually, you know, undergoing in that stage of life. That could be a huge problem. But in general, though, like when it comes to like eight rules for love, there are basically eight rules that you can follow when it comes to ESFPs. And uh, from there, you know, it, it will give you like general success in relationships, general success. So the first rule um, and I'm trying to like not be as long-winded in these uh, other episodes um, because we've gotten a huge amount of complaints about uh, these being very long-winded, and I totally understand. But but you know the first rule is is that like make sure that you are healthily leveraging your own attention uh, because ESFPs crave attention; they need attention, and sometimes. They also need you to be willing to drop everything you're doing right then and there and just stop for a second and just hear them out. And that kind of combines with the second rule of like, make sure that they are always heard. You give them an opportunity to vent. If Because here's the thing is if you, if you really take away their voice, they're definitely going to take away your voice. And if you're with an ESFP, you're likely a TI user. And ESFPs are very good at tuning you out. They're very good at... Um, Gosh, what is it? Um, just kind of like ignoring you. They're extremely good at ignoring you. They're like, yeah, 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 whatever. And they're just going to go on to their own little mental world after that or just completely mentally retreat away from you. You don't want to find yourself in that situation. And one of this, uh, so so really the first rule is, is like provide your attention, but then also like mix in some demonstrations of loyalty while you do it. You really, they really do need somebody to just kind of stop what they're doing for a second, and they need the ability to come into a room and interrupt you or whoever uh, they're in a sexual relationship with and interrupt that person to cause that person to just stop what they're doing and be interrupted at that moment so that they can basically tell that person how they feel about something. It could be a success or it could be uh, venting about some negative thing. It doesn't matter. But literally, like, you know, it's like a it's like the stop, drop and roll uh, relationship. ESFPs need their partners to stop, drop and roll when it comes to that partner's attention, because uh, especially ESFP men, it's extremely important for ESFP women that the uh, or ESFP men that the women in their lives are respectful enough to them such that they're willing to just completely just stop what they're doing, divert all their attention away from what they were doing, and point their own introverted sensing onto their ESFP man. And their ESFP man needs to know and feel that they are receiving her all of her attention. Because one of the things that irritates them the most is that they're like, hey, I'm contributing this to you. I got my ISFJ shadow. Uh, I'm very interest based. I'm kind of really aware of what I'm getting out of this relationship compared to what you are. And I'm giving you a lot and you don't even give me the time of day to like actually give me attention. Really? Why am I in a relationship then? And it, and that's literally the fastest way to completely demotivate an ESFP within the context of relationship. You want to demotivate them? You want them to like stop wanting you? You want them to like not desire you anymore? Well, stop giving them attention then. Oh, you want to be wanted by your ESFP? You want to be desired by your ESFP? You want to be sought out by your ESFP? You want them to continue to show you new things and give you new experiences and make sure that your life isn't boring? Well, then you need to give them more attention. 
It really it really comes down to attention. Attention is the defining the defining thing about the relationship. Another aspect of attention being the first rule of giving them attention is that you kind of like you can actually go even further. You can uh, you can even kind of make it a little hypersexual a little bit too. You can you can get to the point where you're like, hey, you know, uh, little ESFP, like guess what? Uh, I'm going to reminisce all these amazing times that we've had in the past. Reminiscing is literally how it is. It is the key. If you got past good memories, the ESFP, it is the key to getting into their pants. You just start reminiscing about uh, old things that you used to do together. And they're like, oh, wow, that was fun. That was amazing, etc. Let's go do this, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that's kind of that's kind of what it comes down to. It's it's a very uh, fascinating, uh, a very fascinating thing, and a lot of people just aren't even aware of that, you know. And I hope people continue to get more aware of that, especially since we're going to be releasing our uh, "How to Bulletproof Your Relationship Against Breakups" uh, course uh, very soon. It's going to be releasing on February 12th. We're about to announce it. Uh, I hope you guys uh, like it and check it out. Uh, there's going to be early bird pricing, uh, which will be available on February 1st. And because uh, like the course, when it is released on the 12th of February, it's going to be like 100 bucks. But if you guys want to have a huge discount before that happens, you're probably going to want to get in on the early bird pricing uh, before like release on the 1st of February. And trust me, it's going to have like 61, 63 different videos, visual aids, all sorts of documents and whatnot, as well as an exercise that you can take uh, your partner uh, through uh, to basically help bulletproof your relationship against breakups. This is all about keeping families together. It's about keeping relationships going all in time for Valentine's Day, basically. So that's coming up around the corner. Okay, hashtag commercial over. So again, with attention, just remember you can always uh, you can always accentuate the attention, you know, by adding in some reminiscence and reminiscing about past times. And especially if you want to go sexual, you start reminiscing about good sexual memories that you've had uh, that you have shared with the ESFP, because that is like the fastest way to make an ESFP horny. Like, oh my God, like that SC hero in its optimistic mode, like they just they just they just can't help themselves. They're just like, oh, you know what I'm saying? So that's 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 the first rule. The second rule for love is obviously we've been talking about them being heard, but really uh, the thing is is that you have to understand that the FI parent is it's still it's still pessimistic and it's a lot easier for them to identify what they don't value versus what they do value over over time and you really need to present uh, what you think is true to them in a way where it gives them an opportunity to decide for themselves whether or not they actually value what you're saying, which means you have to be willing to listen to their feedback, actually more like hear their feedback. They need to felt that the, you that, that they have all of the room in the world to provide you feedback, positive or negative, enabling or disabling, it doesn't matter, uh, to you, and that you can take it. And that you'll actually spend time thinking about it. Like you'll actually understand, like, because they're not going to share something that's very important and very integral to them, the things that they value the most. They're not going to share that with you unless they understand that you're actually going to provide strong consideration for it. It's it's a really, really big deal. And sometimes, though, it just gets, regardless of how silly, because sometimes, let's be honest, like, ESFP feelings can be completely silly. ESFP feelings can be entirely unfair and unfounded consistently. Oh my god, it's 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 crazy. It's horrible. It's life. But the reality of the situation is it's it's a thing. It's it's just how they are. And if you don't have the patience to sit there and allow them to actually share their values even if they're ridiculous and you're not going to like make them feel that way, then they're going to have nothing to do with you. So like you really have to, when they're sharing with you about what they feel about something, you're going to have to sit there through the entire process. It's already hard enough for them to like figure out what it is what they want to articulate anyway. Because they have TI Trickster. Articulation is extremely difficult for an ESFP. Do you think an ESFP is actually very capable at public speaking? Very few of them are. And there are some that are very good at public speaking, but there's very few of them who are actually good at public speaking. So it's a really, really big deal that if they're going to, 
that if they're going to bother to articulate to you, their, your, their partner, how they feel, that you need to be ready to take it on and actually take it in and actually, you know, realize, okay, this is what this person values. But at the same time, you also need to be ready to present them the choice of potential other values that they could consider as well if you want to offer a counterpoint. But here's the thing. Rule number two is all about being able to take their feedback. And sometimes their feedback can be extremely scathing. It's an FI parent. It's going to parent you. And their feedback can be really scathing. And that's one of the things that I actually regret about my first marriage is that I completely violated rule two. I, I completely violated it. Um, had I known this, I would have behaved things very differently. I would have actually known that when she was actually articulating how she felt about something, that it was a really big deal. And I shouldn't have just T.I. parented her and, see, and seen her as this like really childish person. I'm like, oh, well, your feelings are unfounded. Your feelings are unfair. This, your, your feelings are ridiculous. Why am I going to bother listening to you? Because then it just makes F.I. parent feel completely dismissed, which just inhibits her ability to even articulate more about how she feels later, which ends up causing the relationship to break down. OK, so again, rule number two, like you you really need to make sure that you're not violating that if they're going to the if they're bothering to articulate the feelings you need to be willing to take that feedback because if you're not going to take that feedback and you're not going to take it like an adult instead of be childish like i was guess what they're not going to give you any more feedback and then you yourself are basically set up for failure and then they're going to blame you for failing later even though they never actually articulated their problem with you because they know because you don't take their feedback. That's it. Have the patience to take their feedback. Okay, that's rule two. It's pretty simple. Rule three. Okay, these people are opinionated. They are all opinions. They have opinions about everything. I mean, seriously, this pen, they have an opinion about this pen. This is a Pilot G210. It's like ink coming out of a quill when I write with it. I love it. Okay, but like they're probably going to tell me that a Pilot G25 or a Pilot G27 is better. Because they have, an they have an opinion on literally everything. And you can't get away from it. And if you're not going to be able to actually let them share their opinion with you, they're going to take away your voice. Like, again, they're going to dismiss you. Because if they feel like their opinion or their input is not even valuable to you, that you're not even going to consider it, they're not even going to ponder their input, not even a little bit, and that you're just going to dismiss them, guess what they're going to do? They're just going to treat you like you're an idiot. They're not ever going to listen to you ever again. You're going to be completely dismissed. And they're going to be like, wow, they obviously don't care about my values. Wow, they're obviously not going to be interested in like potentially thinking about things differently. Because the thing is, is that TE Child is like, oh, crap. I don't want my partner to be thinking in terms of an echo chamber all the time. You see what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. You don't want that. You don't want that in your life. They don't want that in their life. They're trying to get away from that consistently. You see what I'm saying? The reason that they're even in a relationship with you to begin with is because you listen to their opinion. You may have been the only person in their life that actually cared about their opinion or listened to their opinion. Okay, you're TI users. And let me tell you something. TE users are very good at listening to TI users. TI users are really terrible at listening to TE users. Okay, this is why I tell TI inferiors and TI child to practice listening. Because at least TI parent can listen decently, although TE critic gets in the way. You think TI hero can listen very well? Ha! TI parent really is the best listening of the TI users, but even then, it still sucks. Let me tell you, I know because I am one, okay? And TI inferior is the absolute worst at listening, and TI inferior is some of the more emotionally compatible with an ESFP, and yet they're like the worst at listening of all the types where they have this problem where it's like, oh, I expect everybody else to listen to me, but I'm not going to listen to anyone. And then the ESFP just is like, wow, you're just ignorant. You're just in this echo chamber. You're just making decisions based on preferred information or old information. And I'm trying to update you right now. What the hell is your problem? Get out of your freaking comfort zone. And do you think that's going to make their SE hero feel safe? Because all of a sudden they realize your attention is on your own thoughts and not their in input. So they're just not even going to bother saying. And this also further inhibits their ability to articulate anything to you. 
I destroyed my first wife's voice in the relationship. I was ridiculous in this area. I fully admit it. I regret it. You know, and it's kind of interesting because I just found out that her ISFJ boyfriend, uh, who who is her golden pair, he's actually uh, watching my videos um, recently and actually learning about the science, which I feel honored that he's doing this. Uh, I have great respect for the man, and in a lot of ways, I kind of wish I was a little bit more like him as I develop my ISFJ subconscious. Uh, but, you know, I even told him recently, and like, look, yeah, dude, like, on it because we've been exchanging emails uh, about this topic and I told him straight up and unsolicited from him I just told him like look this is why I maintain you are a much better man for her than I ever was because that's just reality you know I can't like like it, it my TI parent with her was so bad that I was trying to change her all the time and she didn't even want to change you know as whereas like my current marriage it's a little bit different like I'll, I'll offer criticism to my wife and she'll actually she'll try to change etc but I'm not saying that she's like, you know, better in terms of like in terms of character in that regard, you know, compared to my first wife. I'm not comparing them, so don't think I am. But but the point is is that like it's different. I did that typical ESFP super ego, ENTP super ego relationship, which is a relationship about refinement when I was trying to refine my first wife, but here's the situation. That's not what she needed in her life. Clearly, she needed a relationship of affection, and the relationship of affection is a golden pair, okay? That's the affection relationship, and that's what he provides to her. And the eight rules for love definitely support showing affection to their partner, and he naturally does it just by virtue of him being an ISFJ. You see what I'm saying, folks? The fourth rule, never take away an ESFP's choice. It's so obvious. Never take away their freedom. Never take away a choice. And even if you're an SI user who realizes there's only one actual choice that they can take, present them options and make it obvious that the choice that you want them to take is the choice that they need to take and will want to take anyway. Or you can always perform the Xanatos Gambit. The Xanatos Gambit is you go to an NI user and you present them choices, and no matter what choice they pick, it still benefits you in the end. That's the Xanatos Gambit. Really, literally, it, it, it just goes without being said. Do not take away the freedom of their infant, their infant inferior NI. It is like a baby. It needs its diaper changed. It needs its bottle. It needs some rocking, you know. It needs to be put to bed all nice, nice. It's a baby, okay? But when you give babies everything they want, guess what? They're very happy and good. But if you don't give what NI inferior wants, freedom, all of a sudden, the house is burning because SC Hero is out raging over the fact that the infant is crying because SC Hero cannot handle the fact that the infant is crying because the hero hates crying babies. It's been the hero for so long saving the world. It saved many crying babies. It's tired of listening to crying, folks. Give the ESFP choices all the time. Rule five comes from their nemesis function. You know what? If you're an SI user in a relationship with an ESFP, I know how easy it is to put your own personal comfort over uh, over an ESFP. But don't forget, ESFPs make sacrifices with their NI nemesis too. And they worry about their comfort, but they are often sacrificing their comfort via cognitive orbit into experted sensing hero to give you a better experience to make you comfortable all the time. And they're primarily doing this. So if you actually think about it, they're technically sacrificing their comfort more for you than you realize, okay? That's like a problem, or is it? Like, you see what I'm saying? Look, folks, if you're an SI user, you need to be willing to at least sacrifice your comfort and be willing to share your comfort with an ESFP. Share your own comfort. That's rule five. Be aware that they need comfort too. They need comfy too. They need clean too. They're just not really good at it. Good luck training an ESFP to turn a light off when they leave the room or shut the door when they leave a room or put their clothes in the hamper or, you know, like, uh, or don't leave a mess in the bathroom. Like, they need comfort too. They need help. And this is why they're supposed to be with SJ types because SJs are all about servitude and SJs clean all the time. And it really helps relieve a lot of the pressure that the ESFP is. If the ESFP ends up feeling responsible for an insanely dirty environment and they're just making it dirtier by the minute, that pressure is going to get to their heads and then they're just going to explode. 
or they're going to actually shut down more accurately. They'll just shut down and just give up and throw their hands up and everything's just going to get worse. And then you yourself, the SI user, is going to get even more uncomfortable. Then you're going to start blaming them and it's just going to turn into a devolving cycle that's just going to destroy your relationship. You can't do that, okay? Remember, they need comfort too. They also worry about the past and they become very nostalgic. And like I was saying previously, you know, when it comes to giving them attention, this is an area where you can reminisce. And by reminiscing and making the hero happy because of cognitive orbit, the fifth function, their SI function, will become happy too. That's all you got to do. It's pretty easy, like extremely easy. Like there's no issue there. Moving beyond that, though, let's move beyond. The next, the next rule, and this is their FE critic. Uh, be honest about what you actually value. Now, like if you're an ISFJ, their golden pair, this is really hard because ISFJs are very good at being aware of what they don't value, and and it's very difficult for them to be aware of what they actually value because they're constantly like you know trying to not worry. But don't self-deprecate so much around the FE critic. It'll just piss them off because ESFPs see their partners as investments and they want really good return on investment. And if you're being self-deprecating around them, it's like, wow, you just completely ruined and wasted all of my investment in you. Great. And then that just makes, it makes them insecure. It makes them feel like that they're, um, makes them worry that all of their effort that they spent on you is wasted. It also uh, means like, okay, do I really want to be in the relationship anymore? And it just adds unnecessary fear, okay? Be completely honest with what you value with yourself. Their FE critic wants you to be honest with yourself and then be honest with them after the fact. But an FE critic will be very aware of when you're not honest uh, with certain things. And another thing is, is that SI users, and this, and this uh, they will criticize SI users that they're partners with who end up getting obligated and then dragging them down with them because of those obligations. And that ends up causing their infant's diaper to fall off. Uh, and uh, and then they have a blowout. Their infant function has a blowout. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, crap. Uh, literally. Uh, I, you know, my freedom is being taken away because you, you took away my choice. And you can't do that. Be honest with yourself in terms of what you value. If you don't know what you value, talk to them about it. Make use of their FI parent. They will help you find what you value because they will tell you what they value and why and how and what they, you know, what they value. They'll tell you what they, they'll communicate with you. And it also helps them practice articulation so that they become more articulate in the process. And then if you adopt those values, guess what? Their FE critic is not going to have that much problems with you. So if you don't know what your values are, so the rule is, the rule is, is share your values. If you don't know what your values are, talk with them about their values and consider adopting ver their values because then the FE critic is not going to be there. Also, the FE critic has a problem of like judging who deserves what, but so also do like crusaders, for example, who are typically in a relationship um, with ESFPs. That FE critic can play God because it's like, well, that person doesn't deserve that. And crusaders are always constantly talking about who deserves what, and they're always playing God and being super judgmental. I do it all the time and I'm a hypocrite and I'm just letting you know, and it's really dumb that we do it, but we do, and it's dumb and they hate it. Uh, my first wife hated it. Yeah, don't blame her. So, but, but that's, but that's, but that's the thing, right? Like you really just got to get into, uh, into that mindset of like, you know, be, be honest with your value system. If you don't know what your value system is, I don't care if you have FI trickster, you need to figure that out. That's why you have FE functions. If you're in a relationship with a partner and you're an FE user, use your FE function. Everyone has an FE function. You're just going to have to learn how to use it. I don't care if it's an FE demon. Not that an FE demon would be in a relationship with an ESFP. I mean, maybe an ESTJ would get with an ESFP um, because that's the benefactor relationship. That's the relationship that's based on trust, basically. So if they're ever lacking in trust in their life, they'd want to have a trust-based relationship, and that would be the benefactor relationship. But that's, I mean, that can happen. But again, you still have to be working hard to really meet that FE critic need. Because here's the thing, FE critic will oftentimes see that it itself is being taken advantage of. It's one of the reasons why they're so interest-based. Even the ENFP who also has FE critic, they also feel like they're being taken advantage of. And that can be a huge problem too. You have to be aware of that distinction and that dichotomy. You don't want to be that person, okay? So make sure you're aware of that. Make sure you're staving against that. So 
be honest about what you value. And if you don't know what you value, then find out what they value and determine whether or not you're going to adopt their value system. And if you don't like their value system, tell them that so that they can change their value system and then adopt that standard. That's all it is. Otherwise, they're going to feel like you're taking advantage of them or that their investment in you is an absolute waste. You want to prevent that. Trust me. The next thing is the next rule, which is pretty obvious. Don't ask an ESFP what they actually truly think. Don't ask them to know the truth. They're only going to talk about their beliefs and obviously respect their beliefs, but just don't don't put that pressure on them. They're not there to think for you. You need you hopefully are a TI user. You need to learn how to think for yourself. And if you're not a TI user, you need to get and you're in a relationship with an ESFP, you need to get other TI users in your life that you rely to ask what they think about things and pick their brains. Don't try to pick the brain of the ESFP because you're just going to end up causing them to feel stupid which is what you don't want them to feel like that. That also could potentially destroy the relationship. Don't do that. Don't ask them what they think. Just ask them what they value or ask them their opinion and literally change your language. Always when you're asking them, hey, do you value this or hey, what's your opinion? Never ask. Never say the words. What do you think about this? That's their job. They're going to ask you what you think and you need to respond with I think even if you're an FI user. And you would naturally say, I feel this or I value this. You need to change your words for them and instead say, well, I think this, even though you're really saying I feel this because you're an FI user. Pretend to be the TI user. It's all about emulation, folks. you got to emulate with these people. OK, you have to emulate with anyone that you're in a sexual relationship with. That's just reality. OK, you have to be able to meet that need because like they don't know what they think and you don't want them to feel stupid. Sometimes they feel huge shame over being TI trickster and not being able to finish a thought in their head because they're just another starter type and having a hard time finishing anyway. Pay attention to that. And then the final rule, do not make your relationship or do not state what you want, okay? Don't tell your ESFP what you want because as soon as you tell them what they want, they will naturally make sure you don't get it. Always hide what you want. Always hide your intentions away from the ESFP and know that they don't know the difference between actions and intentions. They have no clue. They literally have no clue because to them, actions and intentions are the same because every time they intend to do something, they do it. So from their perspective, there's no difference. But to an SI user, there's a huge difference between intent and action. But they're only going to judge you based on your actions anyway. So you talking about intentions doesn't mean anything to them because any demon will just eat it alive. They don't care about what you want. So stop talking about what you want. Instead, just talk about what you need, right? Make it about needs and even kind of slip in some of your wants among the needs and make it how and give them reasons why you need this, even though you really want it and you know deep down it's a want, but make it about what you need because that engages their SE hero while getting away from their expert intuition demon that will basically destroy all of that. You don't want that, folks. You, you absolutely need to just stay away from that entire thing. Uh, like that demon will, will eat you up. It will spit you out. It will literally hate you. That is how you engage their hatred. Because here's the thing, if you're talking about your wants all the time around an ESFP, do you know what they're going to do? They're just going to naturally assume that you don't care about what they want. They're gonna naturally assume that you're going to eventually take their choices away. And then that just makes them afraid. You wanna make an ESFP insecure? You wanna make an ESFP scared? Start talking about what you want all the time and make everything about what you want. And then eventually they're just going to hate you and then they're going to feel like whether or not it's true or not they're just going to feel like that you don't care about their wants and then they're going to start acting out and then they're going to start punishing you with their isfj shadow for it punishing you for sharing all of your wants all the time and obviously ignoring theirs even though you probably weren't but you're just irresponsible because you don't know what you're dealing with because you don't realize that this is an expert intuition demon that doesn't give a damn about what you want so don't talk about wants, talk about needs. And if you do have wants, make them look like needs. That way their SE hero is engaged and not their NE demon. You do this, I promise you, you'll be far more successful within your sexual relationship. You know, this is how you show love. 
to your ESFP partner. And I guarantee you they will appreciate it for the rest of your life. Anyway, folks, uh, if you found this uh, lecture educational, useful, helpful, enlightening, all those things, please leave a comment below and leave a like. Um, trying to keep these a little bit shorter, um, maybe around 30 minutes if I can. I'm trying to do a 30 minute standard from now on. It's just, uh, or lower. Uh, just So bear with me, folks. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, this content really helped you out. So thanks for watching, folks. And uh, I'll see you guys tonight.